So what does the sweet business, Xenophage and Air Apparent all have in common? They all work extremely well with the Action War Rig and can allow you to fire your weapon beyond its maximum amount of rounds it has stored up. You've probably already seen the sweet business and war rigs builds that everyone uses and is a very effective setup for both PvE and PvP that doesn't require a lot to create it. The Xenophage is a weapon that when paired with the war rig can be extremely powerful against bosses especially when you further add in the war mine cells for a boost in damage. And yet, I haven't seen many people do a air apparent build even though its effectiveness is near the same as using the sweet business but with a bigger magazine size. So with understanding this area not being covered that much by people, we're going to go ahead and create one for ourselves. This build I have here will follow the simple setup that the majority of Acton Warwick builds follow, and even if you don't have everything I have shown, then it won't mean this is the end of the build, but rather you can build further onto it by using something else to fill the void. It's going to be a very simple Acton Warwick and Air Power build for pure and simple PvE fun. Before we dive in, if you have any builds or things you'd like me to cover then by all means please do leave a comment in the comment section I'll be sure to have a look at it and see what I can make from it from there. So starting things off with the subclass of choice, we will be going with the Codod Siegebreaker to make use of the sunspots we create. Now Bottom Tree Siegebreaker has always been the best neutral subclass to run when you want to either support others or use your abilities a lot without relying on mods or exotics and generally best fit players who are new but want to be effective in some way. With this being the case, this makes using the subclass powerfully neutral abilities very effective when you're not planning on fully using this subclass as its main component of the build. My plan for the subclass is to make full use of the Soul Invictus, Mortar Blast and Sun Warrior Puck for a vast increase to our natural flow of abilities regen and use the Sunspots buff to get a 20% damage buff which will affect all of our weapons overall damage just for a few seconds. Naturally, going this method here means I won't need to rely on using the mods such as High Energy Fire for a constant damage boost as long as I have my sunspots up and running, which, with the help of the Demolitionist Puff for Grenade Regen on the go, makes it very easy to constantly have sunspots all the time. So, everything works out as planned. Still, if you have the High Energy Fire mod, then it may be effective for you to add it into your build instead. For your grenades, I would recommend you use the Thermite Grenades for their long lasting damage, coverage and duration in terms of taking on oncoming enemies. Incendiary Grenades are also great for wide and quick damage as well, but aren't that strong enough to produce sunspots on the spot. For the weapons, your primary and secondary will be of free choosing as nothing too specific is required, but you will need an AR and ideally the Demolitions perk in one. Heavy now, you will need the Air Apparent Machine Gun. But if not, other choices are available, do remember that. Within my primary I'm going to be using the Breach Light Sidearm with Elemental Capacitor and Demolitionist. The Breach Light is a hard hitting 2 burst sidearm that works incredibly well in both PvE and PvP and I recommend you try and get one with the Demolitionist, Vorpal Weapon or Osmosis perk. I will be using my sidearm as backup when things get too heavy but also to weaken targets so I can activate my finisher more. This is important as we will be utilising the heavy finisher mod a lot so it may be wise for you to find a sidearm that follows in that footstep. I would recommend you try and get a version that can roll with the Vorpal Weapon for that 15% damage boost against bosses as it can be helpful for filling in the gap when both your secondary and heavy are out of use. But I doubt that will happen since your AR and your heavy will be auto reloading when using your exotic at hand. If you wish to get this weapon, go to the recast in the Drifter and get the Dawn Focus Umbral Engram for a chance to net it from there. The secondary, we have the Norn Hunger AR with Demolitionist, Field Prep and Accurized Round. My usage of the weapon revolves around the Demolitionist perk once again, so I can get my grenades and sun tots going and create a consistent rotation of abilities that are fully stopped as long as I net miss my kills. The role I have here is very much suited for both PvP and PvE. And I have covered this in one of my past videos, the Sticky Darkness build, showing how effective the weapon roll is, but for short, having both fill prep available for a bigger ammo reserve and fast reload, combined with the Demolitionist perk, means you won't ever have to worry about being out of action. Now when combined further with our exotic chest, the Warvig, we can add on near infinite ammo to the growing list of what the weapon can do, and many many more. This will be your main weapon to use until you get your heavy ammo for your heavy going, 
Then you can switch to your heavy to throw down the kill to come out damage until you run out, and then just rinse and repeat. For heavy, I've chosen to use the Air Apparent Exotic Machine Gun, a machine gun that was once available in Guardian Games, but not anymore, sadly, with no ET as to when it will be released again. The whole premise of the build will be to focus on getting your heavy ammo up and running, to use this ultimate bad boy for sheer thrills and chills. Now, the weapon comes with a perk called Armor the Colossus that provides a large arc shield when you spin it up, and although the shield doesn't last long depending on the type of enemy you face, the few seconds of protection you get is very handy when using it against adds, as one thing to note is that you can't ADS with a weapon, the weapon is purely hip fire only. The weapon doesn't offer much from there to be quite honest, just a big heavy machine gun that you can fire for a long time, and truthfully is best suited for the build we have in mind, where we can just mow through enemies like they're nothing, and if you're a fan of using the sweet business in PvE or PvP then this would definitely be a weapon worth using. One thing to note is that the weapon is a 900 RPM frame so it will eat through ammo quickly, but this shouldn't be an issue if you have the Axion War Rigs that can auto reload your weapons as you fire. Alternatively, the Temporal Claw Machine Gun can be gotten from the Recaster, which is similar in the way its function is, and should have a max light level that you can bring it into Beyond Light. Plus, it can roll with the Ambitious Assassin perk for even more ammo on the go, so if you don't have this weapon, then this alternative is also a great choice to pick. For the stats, there's not a lot of areas that you need to heavily focus on to make the build work, which thankfully means New players and veteran players have the freedom to choose in which stats they want to focus on. Now like all builds, it's recommended you have a resilience at 50 max and recovery at 60 and above as the recovery stat will allow you to get back in action faster and the resilience stat is only beneficial at 50. For your discipline stat, leaving it at 50 is much recommended if you have a weapon with the Demolitious perk active as any more from there is entirely up to you but it's best to leave it there for now. The intelligence stat is now something I highly recommend you put a few points into so that we can make the mod Heavy Finisher work in conjunction for it so that we can get loads of heavy ammo on the fly. Now placing the stat at around 50 to 70 is the sweet spot to go for as we can fill in the rest with other mods, but going to 90 is also fine. However, unless you feel confident in your stats levels already, then it's best we keep it as low as we can and focus on filling in the niche areas for survival. Also, one thing to note is that I also have the Storm of Lead mod for my machine gun so that every time I get a kill with my machine gun, I get super energy back. So this is why I say to you to look into your intelligence stat and ideally play around with it to see what best fits you. You can either have a lot put into it or you can just have the bare minimum which is around 50 at best. Next for the armor, same thing like always, you will need this season and last season's armor pieces for the mixture of mods we are going for. Now, you will need two Soul Affinity pieces and two Arc Affinity pieces, ideally one Arc Affinity being for your Titan Mark so you can use the Storm of Lead mod, but once again, if you have the Season Pass, the armor provided are the best one to work with as they come with high stats and six free armor slots for you to work with, with each one of them being fully customizable to your preferred choice. Exotics, as mentioned, we will be working with the Action War Rig with Arc Affinity, so we can add on the Heavy Machine Gun Reserves mod. That's really everything you need to add to that exotic. So, with that all being covered, let's look into the mods that we will be using. Head, Recovery and Sustain Charge mod. Arm, Recovery, Auto Rifle Loader and Super Charge mod. Chest, Concussive Dampener, Large Arm Reserves and Machine Gun Reserves mod. Leg, Discipline, Machine Gun Dexterity and Reactive Pulse mod, Mark, Heavy Finisher and Storm of Lead mod. So just as the build has been previously explained, you have your Agion War Rig, AR of Choice, Sunspots and your Machine Gun, which when all combined, will allow you to cause some serious hurt onto those that want to challenge you with your near infinite ammo. Now the trick to making the build work, not only for your air apparent, but for any machine gun in game is the little mod called Heavy Finisher. Now this is a seasonal mod that will disappear after the season ends, so I would advise you to go and try it out now while you still can, but this mod here will allow you to produce heavy ammo every time you net a kill via finishers, and I'm quite surprised that it's only taken me now to go ahead and explore the mod, as it's generally really good when you get a combo for it going. Now the downside to use the mod is that it sacrifices half of your super energy that you have stored up for a heavy brick or two, which means you can't spam it, 
but we can counter that with the Storm of Lead mod that gives us super energy upon machine gun kills and having our attention stat at around 50 to 70 like I mentioned earlier. This combined with some of the heavy reserve mods for taking in more heavy ammo from the bricks means that we can in practice take out a large number of enemies until we run out, find and finish an enemy for a heavy brick to drop, and then reap the rewards of having more heavy ammo available than before, and then repeat the process over and over and over again. A simple and straight to the point build. This is a very fantastic and fun to mess around with set that focuses purely on the enjoyment of near endless ammo for ARs and machine guns, and is something you can bring with you into Beyond Light as well. Another thing to note is that I also added in the Reactive Pulse mod so that we can get extra protection when in close quarters fights, which is handy when you're getting attacked from all sides since you will be vulnerable. We also get a powerful overshield from finishing enemies off as well, which is also handy for extra protection. As you're going to be using your finisher a lot to gain heavy as you go, it seems the most fitting to have this mod on you and trust me you will generally need it. Now like all builds that focuses on heavy usage around heavy weapons, your biggest enemy will be running out of ammo quickly, which sounds counterproductive to what we are achieving. Now the reason behind this is because heavy machine guns chew through ammo incredibly quickly and you can get carried away from doing this to the point of realising that you have no ammo left, even though you had probably about 200 plus earlier on. Using the finisher mod to produce heavy will help negate this action, but do remember to always have enough super energy available to pull this off. Another downside to the build is how vulnerable you are when you're using a machine gun compared to others. Although the air apparently gets an arc shield when at full health and spun, it doesn't last very long, which is why it's important to make full use of cover when you get the chance to, just so you can survive a tad longer. Of course, with the Reactive Pulse mod, we can negate damage to a degree by gaining an AOE shield, and also producing an AOE that can kill all those around us who basically physically attack us. For those that don't have the mod now, it's probably wise to add on a Concussive Dampener mod, or Elemental mods, or even the Protective Light mod to help reduce damage, but only if you have these mods available to go ahead and do so. Now, if you have a legendary machine gun of choice, then I don't think this area will affect you if you're not using the air apparent, but I do think it's always wise to have some kind of damage reducing mods to help allow you to survive longer when you're out in the open and there's barely any cover available. So overall, new and old players, if you're in the mood to kick it back and enjoy some unrelenting fun with the infinite ammo in PvE, and want something to carry you into beyond light until you find something a bit more flexible and it fits you more, Perhaps give this Ramberish build a try. I'm sure with your creativeness, you'll be able to find something worth using within this set, and whatever area you plan to use it in. If so, if you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like and sub. Also, follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny content. If you dig that type of stuff, link is always down below. But once again, thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you all in the next one.